Okay, we'll talk about a rigid object in equilibrium. Let's say that we have uh, this object here that is under the influence of a force F that is applied at an angle theta uh, with respect to the radial vector from a pivot point O. So this is our position vector of the application point of the force. That's point P. And the perpendicular distance between the uh, force F and the pivot point O is D. So uh, this force will have translational effect and also rotational effect because uh, there is a pivot point here uh, at uh, there's at point O. So if this, there's a, this is an axis of rotation, this is fixed uh, at this point, it will just have a torque effect. Otherwise, uh, we can have forces having a translational effect. So what are the conditions for equilibrium, for this object to be in equilibrium? Well, the first condition is that the net external force on the object must be zero. This is called translational equilibrium. So uh, we can write this as sum over all the forces, external forces acting on the object will add up to uh, zero. Uh, and uh, from Newton's second law, uh, the net force acting on an object is mass times the acceleration of the center of mass. And if this is zero, that implies that the acceleration is zero. And this is when viewed from an inertial reference frame. Remember, an inertial reference frame is a non-accelerating reference frame. Okay. And uh, the other condition is that the net external torque on the object about any axis must be zero. So that's called rotational equilibrium. So all the torques acting on the object should add up to zero. And that using Newton's second law rotational form implies torque equals I alpha. Alpha is zero. So there should be no angular acceleration when this object is viewed from an inertial reference frame. Okay. So we have two conditions. Translational equilibrium, the net external force acting on the object should add up to zero. And rotational equilibrium, net torque acting on the object should add up to zero. And that implies acceleration of the center of mass is zero and angular acceleration is zero. So these imply basically you have a constant speed and constant angular speed, right? But if in addition we have the velocity of the center of mass is zero and angular speed is zero, the object is said to be at static equilibrium. So it is at rest, it's not moving at all, then it is in static equilibrium. Okay, so uh, we look at all the forces acting on the object, they should add up to zero, all the torques should add up to zero, translational rotational equilibrium, and then if the object is in static e equilibrium, we should uh, check if the velocity of the center of mass is zero and angular speed is uh, zero. Now, a special case, if all the forces lie on the xy plane, then they are coplanar, so they share the same uh, plane. So what does that imply? If I add the x components of all the forces, they should add up to zero. The y components of the forces should add up to zero. And let's say that we have a z axis as the rotation axis. The torque uh, with respect to the z axis should be zero. And this is actually with arbitrary axis of rotation location. So we can put it anywhere we like. Uh, on the object and the torque should add up to zero. Okay, now another important concept is center of gravity. And if the gravitational acceleration is uniform uh, over an object, then the center of gravity coincides with the center of mass. So let's remember how we calculate the center of mass location. Uh, we consider this object to be divided into small particles and each particle has a position um, x i y i with respect to the origin and uh, we basically calculate the center of mass x component uh, position vector x component as m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 so we add up all the masses with their corresponding um, 
x uh, component of the position vector with respect to the origin and divide it by the total mass, sum over i m i. So we can call this capital M. And for a continuous mass distribution, this summation turns into an integration integral x dm. Then if we do the same for the y component uh, of the position vector of center of mass and the position vector of the center of mass is x center of mass i hat plus y center of mass j hat. So uh, that was the center of mass. So the center of gravity is the point at which mass times the gravitational acceleration at the center of gravity has the same effect on rotation as the combined effect of MIGI. So in comparison to center of mass here, uh, if we have a non-uniform distribution of gravitational acceleration, say that for particle 1 we have gravitational acceleration 1 and 1g1 is the weight that is pointing down and we have m2g2, m3g3 and at the center of gravity we have total mass times the gravitational acceleration at the center of gravity. So it's the same story, we divide this into many particles. So if we take the rotation axis through the origin, uh, we will find that using the right hand rule, the perpendicular distance is the x component of center of gravity. So x uh, CG multiplied with F. So if you uh, point from the uh, pivot to the uh, application point of the force, curl your fingers towards the force, the thumb points into the page. So that means it's in minus k hat direction. So if we perform the same procedure for all particles, L1, G1 uh, will have uh, an a perpendicular distance with respect to this uh, pivot point x1 and 1g1 x1 but it's also in minus k hat direction so uh, we go here and then here and uh, so pointing from the uh, pivot point to the application point of the force uh, curl the fingers towards the force and the thumb points into the page so it's also in minus k hat direction so uh, you can see that uh, these uh, all of these particles should have the same torque effect as the center of gravity. So if all the gravitational accelerations are the same, so we have a uniform uh, gravitational acceleration all throughout the object, then you can see that equating these two torques, we obtain the x component of the center of gravity exactly equal to uh, the x component of the center of mass location. So m1x1 plus m2x2 uh, for all the masses divided by the total mass m. Okay, so center of uh, gravity and center of mass are two different uh, concepts. Center of gravity is uh, basically the point at which we have uh, the total weight, uh, capital M times uh, G, center of gravity pointing down. It has the same torque effect as all the uh, particles that make up this object uh, for rotations with respect to uh, any uh, axis of rotation. So uh, this that's basically center of gravity. But if we have the same gravitational acceleration at each point, g1, g2 equals g center of gravity, then basically the location of the center of gravity is uh, the uh, equal to the location of the center of mass. So the position vectors will be exactly the same. All right, so uh, in this lecture, we have talked about equilibrium. Uh, when we say an object is in equilibrium, the net external force on the object should be zero. The net external torque with respect to any axis of rotation must be zero, translation and rotational equilibrium. If in addition, the velocity of the center of mass and angular speed are zero, the object is in static equilibrium, it's at rest. For coplanar forces, for example, on the xy plane, these conditions would imply the x components adapt to zero, y components adapt to zero, and torque with respect to the rotation axis, perpendicular axis of rotation would be the uh, z-axis, but this can be at any location on the uh, in, in the 
uh, universe, so it can be with respect to any axis of rotation, uh, we should have a zero torque. Then we talked about uh, the center of gravity. First, we remember the center of mass calculation for a discrete mass distribution. It is sum over I M I X, uh, R I divided by sum over I M I uh, to find the R position vector of the uh, center of mass. For a continuous mass distribution, it's integral X dm divided by capital M, where dm, the differential mass, would be equal to lambda dx or uh, sigma dA or rho dv for uh, three-dimensional mass distributions. So this dm can be lambda dx, uh, sigma dA or rho dv. So for a volume distribution, for an aerial mass distribution, and for a linear mass distribution, we have these mass densities, lambda, sigma, and rho. Uh, and uh, for a uniform mass distribution, these are basically equal to the total mass divided by the length, divided by the area, or divided by the volume of the object. Now, the center of gravity is the uh, point where we have uh, the mass times the gravitational acceleration at that point, the total mass times the gravitational acceleration at that point, has the same effect on rotation as the combined effect of all the MIGIs. So uh, it basically replaces MIGIs um, for this partic particle. Uh, and basically we see that if the gravitational acceleration is uh, the same at each point, uh, the object is uh, not very big. Uh, then we have uh, the center of gravity location exactly equal to the center of mass location.